So it turns out there's a real life reason the eagle is the symbol of the assassins in Assassin's Creed. Find out that and a whole lot more in this video. Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back with a new style of episode in the Assassin's Creed The Truth series. Now I'd like to note, the game series is something I'm not very involved in much anymore, but something I'll always have a passion for is history. So from now on, this series, Assassin's Creed The Truth, will focus on real life histories of the Assassin's Creed franchise. And to kick the theme off today, we'll be diving into the real life history of the Assassin Order that the franchise Assassin's Creed is based off of. We will be looking at the historical landscape that backdropped the time and reason the Assassin Order came in to be between the 11th and 13th centuries, their rise into infamy, and ultimately, their fall. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The Assassin Order that we know of in the Assassin's Creed game series is based off a real life group that existed in the Middle Ages in and around Persia and Syria. Now they weren't exactly jumping off buildings into hay bales, but the real Assassins did some pretty insane stuff. The Assassins were a group that were notorious throughout the region for their skills in targeted killing and infiltrating the ranks of their enemies through means of long term commitment to a target and a willingness to die for the kill. Sometimes these assassinations would take even years to complete, with the assassin having to infiltrate the inner circle of a high ranking politician or religious leader to get close to them. The assassins, or Hashashans as their enemies called them, were actually a Shia Islamic sect known as Nazari Ismaili, founded by an Ismaili missionary Hassani Saba. He led the movement of the Nazari Ismaili that in 1090 AD took Alamut Castle in Persia and gave rise to the Order of Assassins. An interesting side note about the first assassin castle Alamut, the legend goes that it was built in 865 by King Wa Sudan ibn Mazuban, whose eagle flew and perched herself on the rock where the castle was later built. The king saw this as an omen and called the castle Alu Amut, or the eagle's teachings, which is a fun little tidbit as it is the eagle that is of major significance to the order of the assassins in the Assassin's Creed video games. Contrary to what you might have already heard about the real life assassins, they most likely did not smoke hash. The assassin order were also known as the Hashashans by their enemies, which to many stories have been told throughout the years about their use of hash that was further perpetuated by European crusaders who arrived in the region during the 12th century. It was claimed that the assassins committed their killings under the influence of these drugs, however it is likely that this narrative is nothing more than fiction, as there is actually no record from Islamic sources, including their enemies, of any drug use at all. It's especially likely to be fiction due to Hassan's strict interpretation of the Quran against intoxicants. The assassins spread themselves over many mountain fortresses in Persia and Syria, including the video game's famed Masyaf Castle. To work in the shadows and fight against the Seljuk Turks, a Sunni Muslim sect who controlled Persia at the time. Based on the assassin numbers and skill, the Nazari Ismaili could not fight against their enemies in the open field. This is why they developed their tactics of working in the shadows, spying, studying their targets, infiltrating their court and waiting for their opportune moments to strike. This would not only throw their enemies into a state of disarray, but also cause fear and paranoia to others, to the point where many viziers and sultans started wearing chainmail underneath their clothes, just in case they were attacked. Now to understand the background that laid the groundwork for the assassins to exist, and their bloody rivalry with the Seljuk, we must have an understanding of the history of Islam. There are two main sections of Islam that exist, the Sunni and the Shia. Now there are about 1.8 billion Muslims in the world today and approximately 10 to 13% of them are Shia Muslims, while the remainder are Sunni Muslims and sects of that faith. The main basic difference between the two started from when the Prophet Muhammad died suddenly in 632 AD without choosing a successor. The majority of his followers believed the rightful successor was his father-in-law, a man named Abu Bakr. While another small section believed the successor should be Ali ibn Abi Talib, who was the Prophet Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law. 
the reality was that it was Abu Bakr chosen as the heir and first Muslim caliph. It is this sect of Muslims who see Abu Bakr as the Prophet's rightful successor that are known as the Sunni. While even though Ali became the fourth Muslim caliph in 656, it is the Shia Muslims who view Ali as the rightful first successor to the Prophet. And while over many years of bloodshed, killings, including that of Ali in 661 AD, and religious growth, the political and cultural separation between the Sunni and Shia grew. Now here's where it gets uh, even more complicated. The Assassins are an even smaller sect of Shia Islam that developed over history and political disagreements. Like the separation between the Shia and the Sunni Muslims due to the successor disputes, something very similar happened again in the Shia sect of Islam. In the late 9th century, the line of Imam in succession to the Prophet Muhammad was disputed once again. The Twelvers, the largest branch of Shia Islam, believed it to be a man named Musa al-Kadhim, while the Islami believed it to be his older brother Ishmael. By the early 10th century, the Ismaili were a recognized sect of the Islamic faith, and in 1067, a 17-year-old Hassani Sabah, founder of the Assassins, converted and swore allegiance to the Fatimid Caliph, the Ismaili Islam Caliphate, that spanned over much of northern African coast at the time. Over years of travel, study, and converting followers to Ismailism, Hassan became more and more committed to his faith. But guess what happened next? Yes, another succession dispute as to who would be the next Ismaili Imam. Hassan supported the current Ismaili Imam Caliph's son, Nizar, for this position, and eventually, this succession dispute created another smaller sect of Islam known as the Nazari Ismaili. It is this sect that Hassani Sabah grew and founded in Persia when he began to organize his followers against the hated Seljuks and spread them throughout the mountain fortresses including Alamut and Masyaf in Persia and Syria. It is this sect of Nazari Ismaili that became known as the Assassins. The Assassin's first notable kill came in 1092 AD when an assassin disguised himself as a Sufi mystic and stabbed and killed a vizier named Nizam al muk of the Seljuk Sultanate. In the years that followed, the assassins killed many members of the Seljuk, from viziers, governors, clerics, and even military generals. Hassan continued to expand his reach further into the Middle East, spreading his sect of Islam, and eventually even cutting ties with the Islami sect back in Cairo. In 1124, Hisani Saba died, but the Nazari continued on after him, with successors taking the sect in varying directions in the decades that followed. In the late 12th century, the leader of the Syrian Nazari became a man named Rashid ad-Din Asinan, who was based in the fortress of Masyaf. It is Rashin who the character Al-Mualim from the first Assassin's Creed video game is based off of. Rashid brought the assassins into conflict with Salah ad-Din, the first sultan of Egypt and Syria, and a main figure during the Crusades. The assassins attempted to kill Salah ad-Din several times, but to no avail. However, these attempts led Salah ad-Din to lay siege to the assassin's stronghold of Masyaf. However, Salah ad-Din withdrew suddenly from the siege, to which there are several different stories as to why that happened, but all have kind of the same theme about them. One night, an assassin managed to slip by all of Saladin's guards and leave a poison dagger in a cake of some kind. Or a poison cake. Or simply a dagger in a note that was poisoned. There are multiple sources claiming different scenarios here, but all kind of around the same idea. But whatever happened, spooked Saladin into making a deal with the assassins, and he then withdrew from a siege on Masyaf Castle. During this time in the 12th century, European Crusaders began arriving in the Middle East. The Crusaders were not seen as main enemies to the Assassins, the Seljuk were. However, at times the Crusaders were targets to the Assassins. In 1192 came Rashad ad-Din Asanin's most notable act when he ordered the assassination of Italian Crusader Conrad of Montferrat, the uncrowned king of Jerusalem. In the city of Tyre, before his coronation, he walked down a narrow street when two men dressed as monks stabbed him to death. Rashid sent a letter to Leopold V, Duke of Austria, claiming responsibility for the assassination order, which at the time King Richard I of England was being accused of. 
Rashid died not long after, in 1193, and the Assassin Order once again continued on. However, things changed in the early 13th century. The landscape of the Middle East dramatically shifted when the Mongol invasion of Persia occurred. This conquest began in 1219, and by 1237 AD, all of Persia was under Mongolian control, besides the mountain fortresses of the assassins, who had pledged their allegiance to the Mongols at the time, most likely to avoid total and utter destruction. However, that was soon to follow irregardless. In the 1250s, Kangas Khan's grandson, Monk Khan, was on a mission to conquer Baghdad, the seat of the Caliphate of Islam. During this time, the assassins began to grow fearful of the Mongols' renewed interest in the region, so an assassination order was made on Monk Khan. However, this attempt was very unsuccessful when the assassins were to look as though they were going to offer submission to him, then stab him when they were given the chance. The Mongols turned the assassins away and had now revealed themselves. The assassins had, for the most part, slipped under the radar of the Mongols' interest and had enjoyed a period of freedom after the Mongols' invasion. But after an unsuccessful assassination attempt of Monk Khan, he was determined to wipe out the assassin threat once and for all. The main assassin stronghold of Alamut in Persia was captured by the Mongols in 1256, which housed the leader of the assassins at the time. One by one, assassin strongholds either fell or surrendered. The final stronghold that the assassin held that was eventually surrendered in 1260 was the famed castle of Masyaf. The greatest loss from history, however, is the library of the assassins, which was destroyed by the Mongols. This has removed all sources of the Nazari's history from their own perspective, which is why the majority of what has been written about them comes down to stories written by their enemies and myths perpetuated by the European crusaders and chroniclers. What the assassins achieved in almost 170 years of their history cannot be understated, however. They became a state sect of Islam that survived all that time in a land determined to destroy him, surrounded by their enemies, and it was only their reputation and notoriety that led to their mistrust and downfall at the hands of the Mongols and not their true enemies, the Seljuk. The history of the real assassin order is a bloody one, with ever-changing religious landscapes impacting the work they did throughout the Middle East during the 11th to 13th centuries. This group was responsible for striking fear into the hearts and minds of their enemies and turned the stories of them into legends that were told and retold even today. Though little is known about the group from their own perspective, their mysticism carried their name on in the history books of their enemies and observers. The first Assassin's Creed video game based their Assassin Order during the Real Order's peak period in the 12th century, adopting the way they worked to fight and kill their enemies, the Order's strategies for living in mountain fortresses like Masyaf, and how their work had a deeper impact than we ever know on the Islamic world by their killings and influence of political and religious leaders during that time. Learning about the real history of the Assassins has been one of the most interesting videos I've ever gotten to write, and certainly built a foundation to which I will continue to make the Truth series from here on out. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please subscribe to my channel for more, and be sure to like this video, as that is how I know videos people really are enjoying watching. Also, head over to patreon.com forward slash as always because you get early access to videos like this, 24 hours early access in fact, plus lots of exclusive content and podcasts. It's great and it helps support me and thanks of course to our Patreon producers. Let me know in the comments some real history you'd like me to dive into that relates to the Assassin's Creed franchise and I can look into that and decide what interests me most as to what to do next. Again, thank you and I'll see you very soon with another episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth.